listening to a teaching today and the teacher made the statement of the law of God or the law of Moses as it's called sometimes reveals the character of God. Now I think this is a common belief, a common sentiment in the Christian world. I don't agree with it. I want to talk about that and for what it's worth, I, when we bring these things up, in case we sound judgmental sometimes because we, we have a lot of conviction, just know it's, it's not judgmentalism. We just have strong feelings because quite often the, we're talking about things we used to believe. We agree with half of these things, if not more. Not the Trinity or stuff like that, but a lot of religious tenets that are very common through Protestantism and Catholicism and all that, we used to hold to a lot of them or some form of them. We were religious people. So we're not judging you if you're religious or, or we'd have to kind of like hate our former selves or judge our former selves. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So if people are thinking that we're going around, oh, Mark and Suzette, you're not religious anymore. And now you think everyone who believes in religion is a terrible, awful person. We don't think that. We just think you're mistaken because we've been on both sides of it. It doesn't prove we're right. I understand that. But we do have the perspective of both being religious and now being free from religion. It seems that it's pretty universal. All of us have to go through religion. It's just sadly, some of us never come out of it. Just like that whole generation of Israel, when they left Egypt, they never left Egypt. <laughs> and, and the Lord didn't let them into the promised land because they were stuck, in my opinion, in a religious mentality of treating God as this great gumball machine that they wanted stuff from and they didn't really want to know him for his person and so they never realized the change that can happen by knowing the person of your God. But anyway, that aside, when it comes to the character of God and the notion that his character is revealed through the law, I disagree with this because he did not give the law in the garden and Genesis being a book about the the origin of things the first things you have the origin of the relationship of God and man and that relationship was founded on God and man being together in mutual trust man trusted his God until he disobeyed a command it was not a law it was a command of don't partake of the knowledge of good and evil, which I look at as incorporating law into your life. Because the knowledge of good and evil is basically what the law is. Know what is good, do that. Know what is evil, don't do that. And therefore become like God, which is another popular religious tenet. It's 98% it's of Christians believe they're supposed to be like Christ. Well, who is Christ? Christ is God. So, I don't believe the law reveals God's character. It reveals our character. Because when you really try to obey it, you see how you can. You see how flawed you really are. And Paul made this clear in several places. The one I think of most often is Galatians 3, somewhere in the 20s, between 24 and 28. I think somewhere he speaks of the law being our schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. To lead us to faith. Christ who is our faith. The law was there. If we would trust and believe. To show us how. Un, un, or disobedient we are. That's what the law does. It doesn't make you obedient. You are just as disobedient. As before you ever knew about the law. You are not more obedient because of the law. It doesn't make you. It just makes you more aware of it. And he speaks about that also in Romans 7. He, he wasn't covetous until the law told him not to covet and then and then it arose in him or, or aroused in him I forget how he puts it there's several different versions but it basically stirred up coveting in Paul that's the purpose of the law so where we see the character of God here's the punchline here it comes I hope you've been waiting and here is what the video is all about the character of God is revealed in that out of nothing, that popular phrase they love to say, ex nihilo, he created everything, including up to now, you and me. You and me, we came from nothing but the thought of God's mind. That is what I believe. You don't have to believe that. Maybe you think your parents made you. I don't believe that. 
They were in on the physical part of it, just like Mary was in on the physical part of Christ being born, but she is not the mother of God. God has no mother. Jesus had a father. Jesus is the answer to the question, what if God became a man? That's why God didn't marry Mary. He came as the man Christ Jesus. That's who the Father is in human form. He is the Son. So he does this. He creates all things. The self-existent one. The self-sufficient one. The one who has no needs. I mean, before he had the cattle on a thousand hills, he had no needs. He didn't need all the problems that would come with creating us, and yet he did it knowing all the problems that would come with it. Why? Because that's his character, because he wanted someone else to be around to love and to appreciate and to experience the good things of who he is. He's fine without us. He chose. He chose. He made the choice that there would be someone besides himself who could not offer him anything. What could Adam offer him? Think about it. What could Adam give him besides his trust? Which I think is something God wanted. He did want that and he still wants it. And God in all his wisdom and genius has created a situation where we can have something now even better than what Adam had. Adam had that one command. Don't seek religion. He sought religion. He fell. He died. But now you can escape that. Whether it's the worldly system or the church system, you can choose to trust your God, in which case he will give you eternal life that cannot be lost. But just to stay on that, the whole revealing of God's character through the creation, he creates us, we have nothing to offer him except that fellowship of trust, one individual to another. That shows his character. He didn't, he didn't create us so we could then live a life of payback. He created us so he could get to know us and see through our eyes and hear through our ears and, and we could get to know him and see through his eyes and hear through his ears and we could have this, this relationship based on mutual trust. He let us make our own choice and even though we failed that first choice, like I say, he found a way to make it into something even better. That reveals the character of my God, that he has been so long-suffering all these thousands of years that he would do the things he's had to do. When you look at the Bible, the things he's gone through, and even since the end of the writing of Scripture, these last 2,000 years, has been no picnic for him, I'm sure. But yet, there are people, every so often, that decide to trust in him, and they are his, and he is theirs. That's why all those quotes in the Old Testament, he said... They shall be my people, and I will be their God. He's talking about Israel, the real Israel, the Israel of God, which is those who trust in Him, those who have faith in Him. That's our righteousness, when we trust in Him and His goodness, His person. So he was looking forward to when he would have his people, both Jews and Gentiles, because it's about trusting your Creator, independent of whether you're a Jew or a Gentile or whatever, acknowledging who he is. You have a God and he gave himself for you. 1 Corinthians 2.2 2. For I've decided not to know anything, or I've determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it in a nutshell. Jesus is your God. Your God gave himself for you. That's, that's the foundation of everything. To knowing his character, to understanding him to seeing the love that he has for you. Not the law, because that love that he has for you is going to be with you from the moment you received it into eternity. But the law is going to go away. That's not about that. That's not about who he is. It's about revealing to us who we are so we can fall on his mercy. That's why he said, if you fall on this rock, in other words, fall on me, fall on my mercy, you'll be broken. And that's a good thing. He wants us to be broken. He wants the law to break us. But if he falls on you, in other words, you insist you can be like him or you reject him or whatever, things are going to fall on you and you're going to be ground to powder. You don't want that. You want to know your God. You want to humble yourself before your creator, who is 
that love that you need, that every single one of us needs. That is a pretty good character, I think. In Jesus' name, amen.